Hello and welcome to another edition of the Fingal's Cave podcast. Um, you've been running a brilliant YouTube channel for some time now and um, you uploaded some unedited interviews, ex excerpts and other interesting snippets. Um, what, what made you start this channel? Was it the same idea of archiving things or just to make public the original unedited interviews you got in your archives? Um, I started it with, a, with absolutely no real idea of what on earth I was doing. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> I, uh, my, uh, I think my daughter actually kept, kept saying to me, you know, you should really th consider having a YouTube channel. And I would always think, well, there's a lot of this stuff I don't own the rights to, you know, uh, or there I own the rights, but they have a distributor, and so I can't use it, you know. Um, Thinking of the finished uh, documentaries. However, I do have some documentaries I own the rights to. These are earlier, uh, and some that I, ma I made a film about Martin Luther King assassination in 1989, and managed to get the BBC to give me the the, the DVD rights, and then you know turned into the streaming rights um, much, much later. So I, so I started by putting up a, a few things like that. And then I thought, well, let's try. There's a few interviews that are interesting. I've always thought they were interesting, such as the Rick Wright interview. But they were they were on uh, DVD extras you know, um, in short, shorter versions. Actually, the Roger Waters one from 2001 was on there in its full length of about an hour. Um, and the Gilmore one was much shorter because the interview was much, much longer, the original interview. So, I, you know, I put up what was easily accessible to me, a few of these interviews and I very, very quickly, you know, um, realized oh, there's an interest in this. It's not just, um, you know, a few musos <laughs> kind of, uh, people are actually watching these and very quickly I got a thousand subscribers. I thought it would take weeks, probably took four weeks. I, something like that. And um, then I started to think more strategically about it. Um, I have, you see, prior to, prior to the mid 90s, everything was shot on film. Um, 16 millimeter film, the documentaries were all made on film and then laboriously edited or, you know, um, cut, cutting up, essentially, and, and stitching together, you know, uh, old school filmmaking. After the mid 90s, with the digital editing started to come in. So you then got far more scope because things are shot on tape. So with Sid Barrett film 2001, is still using, actually, 2001 is still using really uh, over big cameras, you know, um, digital beta cam cameras, like really sort of heavy and, you know, poor guys are sort of lifting them up and they're on their shoulders if they're doing handheld. Um, every time I'd suggest doing a handheld hand interview, you know, there'd be a groan from, <laughs> That's like, <laughs> but you know, take the Mike Leonard, for instance. We're, we're filming there, and I just said, You've got to do this handheld because it's such a, an amazing warren, this house. And he, he just wanders around all over it, picking out 
wonderful details. And even going up on the roof, you know, where Pink Floyd what, would sit up there and doodle. <laughs> and, you know, we're taking this massive... Anyway, so uh, what I'm getting at is that all this stuff goes down on tape and I kept the tapes. Um, if I hadn't kept the tapes, uh, we wouldn't have any of this. So, you know, the tapes have followed me around and the, the, they're currently in a storage unit, you know, in, uh, in Oxford, in England, in, uh, you know, which hopefully um, they, they re is, is fully secure. <laughs> I'm not going to name where they are in case someone just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better not, yes. <laughs> I, so what, what's happened since... I started the channel in uh, May 2021, partly out of frustration with the pandemic never ending and finding it very difficult to get going, making documentaries at that time. I didn't know what I was doing. I followed YouTube videos on how to, how to start a YouTube channel, you know. I started digitizing some of those interviews were, um, and getting kind of interesting reactions. And I, essentially, what's intriguing to me is that at the core of this is that people love the content when it's not mediated in, um, in a film. Because a filmmaker, we were always snipping and cutting and taking bits out, and, you know. Sometimes I, I would feel that we weren't doing justice to the strength of the interview because you were driven by the time constraint. This is this is a 50-minute film in the case of the Sid Barrett film. It's very short. Yeah, and, and there are two, two levels. I mean, yeah. there are two levels. The first level is how to conduct the interview itself because of... Of course, you had a goal, you wanted to go somewhere and you conducted that right. interview with that plan in mind. Yeah. And that, if you if you see the complete interview like David Gilmore, for example, one hour and 41 minutes or something like that, yeah. of course, you can see the structure, how you're doing it. And that in itself is, I wouldn't say it's a movie, but it's almost like a reportage to see. Yes. And that's a very interesting part of it, I would say. Well... I'm, I'm very happy you say that. <laughs> I mean, there are mixed messages that I get on the comments section, but I, th I think there's a w overwhelmingly people appreciate it. Um, I mean, uh, you know, I wake up in the morning, first thing I look at is all the comments that come in, and probably, probably, uh, maybe twenty percent of them are negative. And I think that's because the style of the interview is to be exploratory, to give it time, you know, to have silence. Uh, sometimes I would always say to uh, my camera, you know, my DP, try not to change, suddenly change shots or zoom in when, when I, when there's a pause because it said sometimes I'll ask a question and there's a long pause but it's it's yeah. very often in the pause that you can watch yeah but I have to admit I don't understand these critics because um, <laughs> you film these interviews not to have a one hour interview but to have perfect snippet to yeah. use for the film so exactly. I think yeah. it's easy to understand in my opinion you would think so Yeah, thank, thank <laughs> but anyway, I mean, you got more than one million views on it uh, on yeah. the Pink Floyd related uh, videos alone. So this is unbelievable, and I, I we as Pink Floyd fans are very grateful. And I remember being at the uh, Pink Floyd community and getting the first links to a YouTube video, new new YouTube video, and and we were all very excited and watched it, and we loved it from the first moment on. So. Um, Well, that's Again, fantastic. you can't get really closer to Richard Wright than on this interview because he's so shy, he never appeared yes. anywhere. There were no interviews of him. So yes. it's, it's, it's a treasure. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I, I think uh, 
often these things also only become apparent after time. Uh, you know, and something that's a tape sitting in a box. For this, to me, in some ways, this is like having a completely fresh look at my work. You know, it's it's a great way of re reviewing it um, because yeah. when you're I think we made this Pink Floyd and Sid Barrett story film in um, about eight weeks once we'd finished the shoot. So I go into the editing and eight weeks later came out with the film the other end and the film was shown about a week after we'd finished it on BBC where it got a lot of attention, uh, which was nice, uh, including a big review by Nick Kent in um, in, in the Times, I think. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when you're doing that in eight weeks, it was literally, I sat with my my good friend, my editor, Ray, and on day one, and he said, well, we've got this deadline, BBC is, is actually showing it. On the, he said, how are we gonna do this? So I said, well, I think we just have to start it's it's sort of literally start at the beginning, start with the chronology, and just tell the story. And we can't go back. We can't sort of go. Oh, we we shouldn't have done that. Or we made. It. Let's just do it. Let's just put it down. Edit. Put it in. Edit. Put it, and then we'll look at the rough cut. Say in three to four weeks time, you know, we'll just keep going until we've got it all down there. Yeah, you, you look at everything and then you start. <laughs> Where does that fit? Where does that? Uh, now, when you're doing that, you have a very brief kind of experience watching the interview with Rick Wright, say. You watch it. You note all the good bits, all the bits that apply, particularly to this film, and then you move on. Well, to look at it again, really properly and in detail, to upload it onto YouTube, you know, 22 years later, 21 years later, you know, see so much more, <laughs> of course. Yes. And in different, you, have, you bring something very different to it, you know. Uh, and so I can see why people now appreciate it for that as much as when it was in the film. That was a very long-winded way of <laughs> describing it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I totally got it. So uh, are there any other projects you're currently working on? Any, any new things um, to upload? Well, there's... I'm... Uh, there's always more to upload. Um, this is that's good to know. That already. archive <laughs> is, yeah. I mean, there's more to upload. You know, it's just, I, I you know, I'm torn now with. I have a. Um, we had Peter Jenner. In, 2001, and I've used Peter Jenner from Wish You Were Here. The interview there. I haven't put up his 2001 interview yet. Does it add anything different? Is it of interest? Um, but the one person that I haven't used the interview of, which we did in 2001, is the other manager whose now, name now escapes me. Um, Peter, Peter and... Uh, we put it on the show notes. Yeah. Um, he, he gave a great... Um, interview and I, I remember it being quite a moving interview as well we ha we had to make it one of those really awful ruthless decisions when we were putting together what was going to be a 50 minute film it was like can we tell this story with two managers two different managers you know they're both saying roughly this filling in roughly the same pieces of the jigsaw so we chose yeah. one and not the other so I have the 
the other manager, um, he would be probably appalled to know that I still had the interview and I've just had it digitized. So I have to, you know, I have to look at these and judge them for what they are, see how much we put up. I don't always put up the whole thing, but part of it. Um, and other people, you know, there's um, Sid's um, first real girlfriend, um, and she gave a really nice interview. I don't know if she wants me to use that now. I, I need to contact her and ask her, you know. Um, yeah. There's, there are, so just on that, there's more. Uh, and then I keep going back over things like the, the, the three guys in 2011. I put up bits of their interviews in different ways. I mean, the last thing I put up was David Gilmore. The whole section where he starts to play the guitar on, yeah. um, he does the whole Wish You Were Here section. And then he does it on, then he overdubs with the 12 string and then he sings it. And I, I didn't think this was going to be accepted because of music rights. I thought they'll ask me to take it down, but they haven't. So that's up, that's just up there. Now I know probably people think, oh, I've seen this. I've seen him playing this, but they haven't. They haven't seen the whole thing. And he says some very interesting okay. things as he does it. Okay, um, so I'm really looking, we are really looking forward to that. That was these bits and that went updates. Up two or three weeks ago, I think. Um, oh, great. Yeah, so there's there's always more. However, great to know. said all that, <laughs> great I'm to actually know. very keen to, to make a new documentary. The one thing I, uh, when you mentioned the Genesis film, the one big lesson I got from doing the Genesis film, which even at my advanced age, you know, I learn a trick or two, <laughs> was that <laughs> that film was um, was kind of commissioned by about uh, too many interests and too many self interests. Uh, you know, you have the, you have the management, you have the broadcaster. You have the production company, the distributor, um, and you have the members of the band. They've all got different interests. And you have Paul Muggins, me, the, the filmmaker, who is trying to kind of have a vision and tell a story and get it right. I mean, I think the thing that what I've learned from that, because I wasn't happy with the outcome of that film, you, you pointed it to it being a different. I did not approve of the final final. I just, I couldn't disapprove of it. I just, my decision was, do I keep my name on it or not? You know, uh, in the end, I decided I would keep my name on for professional reasons only, really. But what I loved about it were the bits of interviews that I'd, I knew that the interviews were great. I knew yes, I had were. some fantastic stuff there. Yes. And eight years later, I started to very sort of, you know, tentatively put them up and see if anyone in management or anywhere else decided to take them down. And they haven't. And I think probably because they like them because they show just how, yes. you know, they show a very rounded picture of their musician, of the musicians. But what happened was that there is this thing where now, because of the commercialization of, of music and documentaries, you know, with, with the rise of Netflix, etc., there's a tendency for record companies and managers to want to make these as public relations products. And it's a huge pitfall 
for anyone involved in being making films, you know, you know, because your your independence is inevitably, you know, stripped away from you. Or it's a drip drip effect. Oh no, John! No, no, you know. Of course, it's yeah. entirely up to you. It's your it's your film. Blah 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 blah. But we uh, would like to. Yeah. We would like you to do it like right. this way. <laughs> but yes, but no, that's not quite right. And that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and that's we can't have that because that's upsetting so and so. And so I, my absolute determination is, um, I'm I'm very interested in making a new film. I'm interested in making a film about someone that I'm very excited about have been for years but I don't I'm not going to take any steps towards it if if the whole kind of structure is that in order to get this funded you're going to have to you know be the the whipping boy of this of the, yeah get it the, the, the corporate yeah. music industry essentially <laughs> it's like so I, I wish you the best God. of luck <laughs> <laughs> I wish you the best of luck for that endeavor that you <laughs> but if anyone's watching this or listening to it yeah do get in touch <laughs> uh, if you're interested in uh, you know because at the end of the day the best documentaries about music are ones where the band or the musician have actually not tried to call a halt pull back I mean fantastic one about yeah. Metallica where they're all in they're all in a therapy session essentially <laughs> because the, the 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 band is in a terrible state they're splitting up they're at loggerheads and the film the filmmaker is filming the whole crisis erupting around them and at the end of the day they said oh go ahead you know what the hell <laughs> And it's uh, you know, yeah. it's it's one of the best music documentaries ever made because it's not kind of there's no kind of filter of you know we have yeah to no filter. promotional exactly framing in the end exactly yeah yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very very much for your time and all these great That's stories true. and insight it's been wonderful talking to you. And uh, thank you all for listening. And please do not forget to subscribe to the Fingles Cave podcast as well as your YouTube channel, which will be in the show notes as well. And yeah, I can say bye bye. Yeah, thanks so much, Niels. Goodbye.